Hi guys, Professor Latimer here, the CC mom who loves science. And today I want to bring you CC Cycle 1, Week 16, Hands-On Science Experiments. This week we have two experiments. Number 130 in your Vian Cleaves Guide, which is Stretch. And number 132, which is Spurt. So you won't need many supplies for these two experiments, which is kind of nice. Uh, for the first experiment, you could do either one first. Um, the stretch one is probably more of a tutor demonstration, the one with the balloon. So I'm going to go ahead and start with that one. So just supplies you'll need for this one are a balloon and like a Sharpie to mark on it. And it probably doesn't matter what color balloon you use, just to make sure, just make sure you can see the Sharpie marker on it. So what we're going to be talking about today, um, and one of the resources I like to use is Nicole Liam's um, science scripts from CC Connected. So she has some really good pictures and graphics to show and some good questions to kind of lead you through the, the discussion. So our experiment today is talking about our hypothesis, our question, can rocks stretch and what happens um, to the rocks in the ground. Does it stay the same? Does it move? And why does it move? And what happens when it moves? So we're mainly talking about what's going on on the crust. So it's a good time to review um, the parts of the geosphere. You have your core mantle crust. So the crust is the part that we live on that outer hard layer. And so for this experiment, you're you're going to imagine that your balloon is like a rock. And so we're going to draw a square on the balloon and you're going to color in two sides. So there's a diagram, a picture of this in your Van Cleves guide of what that is going to look like. And I've heard this is easier said than done, but I'm going to try to draw a square on the balloon. It's a little tricky. I'm going to try to color in the two sides. Okay. So that is my square, and I've colored in two sides. It's basically just so we can see what happens um, to the design as we expand it. So we're going to imagine that this balloon is a rock, and the part that we colored in, it, it's an example of like the particles that make up the rock. So a hypothesis, a question, can rock stretch? You can bring in a rock, it's like, does it look like it can stretch? It's really hard, we wouldn't like, really think that it can stretch, but it actually does. So we're gonna demonstrate what happens when you put a rock or another object, but we're thinking about rocks, under pressure. So a tutor is going to, to blow up the balloon just a little bit, and we'll see what happens to the particles in a rock. Okay, so I blew it up just a little bit. And you can ask the question, okay, does the design look the same? Are those particles in the same spot that they were? And no, um, it's farther apart. And you can ask, are, are they all the same distance apart or did some particles stretch more than others? So I would say the ones on the top stretch farther apart than the ones on the bottom. And so you can ask them, well, why did that happen? And it's because of the, the air pressure that we put inside the balloon. There was a pressure from gas that was pulling um, on the particles of the balloon. And it was pulling those particles, stretching those particles apart. And that's what happens inside the earth. There's pressure underneath the crust and the plates on the top they're, they're pulled, but sometimes that tension force, and that's where you can um, share the vocabulary for tension, is a stretching or pulling apart force. So sometimes those parts of the crust, they're pulled apart by a pressure underneath, just like the pressure from the balloon. So I'm going to blow it up a little bit more. And you can see they stretch even farther apart. And you can ask them, is there a point where I put so much pressure in there that the 
the particles would break. And yes, so eventually the balloon would pop. And that's just like with the, the layers of the crust, if we put too much tension on them, if there's so much pressure and force pulling those particles apart, eventually they will break as well. And that's what happens in an earthquake. And there's that pulling, pushing, there's different forces going on, but one of those is tension. And so eventually, like if there's a lot of force, then it might break. But if there's not, then God made rocks to be able to stretch. And so what happens when that pressure goes down? So you can ask them, what's gonna happen when I release the pressure out of the balloon? And get their hypothesis. That would be kind of fun. So you release the pressure and then, so look at the design. Did it go back to its original size and shape? And yeah, pretty close. So rocks can do that as well. So they can stretch with that tension force and if they are not under too much pressure, when that pressure is released, it'll go back to the way it was. But sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it breaks, sometimes it there's pieces and so it, it creates different formations on the earth's surface. And so, like oh, Liam, you can show like a diagram or if you can find a picture of like the different types of forces. So a shear stress, you can talk about a shear stress is when they're, they're pushing against each other kind of sideways. There's a compression stress where they're pushing against each other. Sometimes that makes the, the parts of the earth go up to make mountains. And so there's different types of stress. Some are pulling apart and when, when they pull apart, they can make like a valley or a crack or a fissure in the earth's surface. And in the next experiment, we're gonna find out what can happen um, when that occurs. So there's some, some good talking points here in Nicole's um, conclusion about the different types of stress and what is created on the earth's surface because of that. But mainly in this experiment, we're talking about tension. So rocks then can be put under a tension force and they can actually stretch. And then um, just like we saw in the balloon. So that is that experiment. That'll be a tutor demonstration. Um, then you can move right into experiment number 132, which is spurt. And it recommends having a half, to, half empty tube of toothpaste. Um, I've seen this a couple ways. One, you know, you can get a full tube of toothpaste and demonstrate, okay, what happens when I squeeze it? And you'll have extra to demonstrate it overflowing. So you might wanna have some paper towels on hand if you want to actually show it um, coming out of your tube. But you have a tube of toothpaste and um, you're gonna have the cap on and you're just gonna ask him what happens. Well, first you're gonna talk about, ask him again, like what the parts of the geosphere are. We have the core, the mantle and the crust. So there's a layer between the mantle and the crust that has liquid rock. It's so hot and it's under so much pressure that rock actually melts. And so there's that this liquid layer underneath the crust and there's a lot of pressure under there. That liquid wants to get up to the surface. And so in our last experiment, when we talked about um, the tension forces, sometimes when those rocks pull apart, they create valleys or they create cracks in the crust. And so if, if it, that magma, that liquid rock underneath the crust finds those those cracks, it will come up to the surface because it wants to go up to release that pressure. So the vocab is um, magma, is liquid rock under the surface. And once it reaches the surface and comes out of the surface, that's when it's called lava. So imagine we have magma inside of this tube of toothpaste. So what happens if I put pressure right here, what happens to the magma? It all is pushed to this side. Okay, what if I what if I squeeze this side and all the magma is pushed to this end? What if I squeeze it in the middle? What's gonna happen? So it'll kind of separate and go to either side. So wherever that pressure is, the magma is gonna wanna find a place to go. So if there's cracks in the earth's crust, it's going to want to go up in those places. 
and sometimes it will cool as it goes it finds a place to go and it will cool and harden and make some formation so um, if it goes up in kind of a point like an upside down V and it hardens underneath the surface it's called a dike so here so it goes it's a vertical but it hardens and that's called a dike if it spreads out horizontally and hardens if there's a crack underneath that it, it can go in horizontally and hardens that's called a sill and then if it goes up and kind of if there's a place where it can make a dome shape, it kind of bubbles up and hardens and makes a dome shape, that's called a lacolith. So those are some words that are also in your Van Cleef's guide that you can talk about. So um, it doesn't always, the magma doesn't always spurt out in a volcano. Sometimes it just goes up a certain amount and hardens. And you have um, those igneous rocks that form, like we talked about in a previous week. So you can demonstrate, um, you can take the cap off and, and demonstrate how it comes out of, of the volcano, out of the magma. But basically we're talking about what happens to magma under the earth's surface and how does it come up to the surface. So you've got your, your vocab words, your magma, the dike, which is when it comes up vertically through like a crack or a shaft and hardens. A sill is when it hardens horizontally it fills a layer horizontally and then a lacolith is when it forms a dome shape so you can you can pass the toothpaste around and let the students take turns squishing it um this could probably get as messy as you want um you can leave the cap on and just see how the pressure that they put the squeezing affects where the magma goes so that's like your pressure so that's a demonstration of force at CC Cycle 1, Week 16, Hands-On Science Experiment. And we'll see you guys soon. Bye.